Hello, my name is Tom Clyke. I'm the National Fleet Account Manager for Horton. Today, we're gonna to show you how to check for an air leak on a DM Advantage on a fan drive, and we're gonna show you how to install a simple seal kit. If anything's gonna go wrong with the Horton fan drive, it might be an air leak, and you'll hear the air leak, and typically there's two spots where the air leak can occur. It's either gonna be right by the friction material on the side of the clutch, or in the out the back of the fan drive through the bleed hole. Now sometimes it can be difficult to determine where it's coming from and you can use a little bit of soapy water to spray around to determine exactly where it's leaking. Once you find that out, the next thing is to check the friction material to see how thick that is. Horton has a liner gauge you can use for either the on-off fan clutch or the two-speed. And what you do is it has a go-no-go, no go, so red and green. You hold it up against the fan mounting friction disc, and as long as it's in the, the green and not turning into the red, which will go this way, the liner is thick enough, and which means you could just put a seal kit in to repair the fan drive, and we're gonna show you how to do that. Now that we have removed the fan drive from the vehicle, you can see the bleed hole I was referring to where the air will be leaking out of if the air cartridge internally is leaking. Uh, it'll go out the back of the fan drive out of this hole right here. The other area the fan drive can leak is out of the quad seal internally, and that quad seal will leak, if it is leaking, it'll leak right here by the friction material around the diameter. Horton fan drives are very common, and there's one seal kit that'll do about 95% of the fan drives out on the market today. That's our kit here, the 994346. Comes with everything that you need, the instructions and all the parts that you need, and we're gonna show you how to put those in next. Horton offers a diagnostic and maintenance kit that has all the tools that you will need to diagnose the fan drive and check for ear pressure to the fan drive and also rebuild the fan drive. Got a couple special tools in that really help make the job go much easier. The first step is to remove the fan mounting friction disc on the top here. And to do that, we're going to need our fan mounting friction disc removal tool. And we're also going to need our T55 plus Torx bit. And a couple breaker bars. This happens to be a 2.56 pilot, so we're using this end. If you had a 5 inch pilot fan drive, you'd use the other end. All right, now to break the uh, jack bolt loose, I always like to uh, do it by hand so that you uh, can feel it loosening up on you. If you use an impact, sometimes you can strip out the T55 Torx bit. So this does say left-hand thread on the fan mounting disc. That's from the back side, so it's a little confusing. This would be loosened left-hand, so it's, it's lefty-loosey, it's a right-hand thread. So you'd push away to break it loose. Once you have it broke loose, you can hold onto the jack bolt and spin fan mounting disc off. At that point, you can see the liner screws, and that's what we'll have to take off. But before we do that, we have to cage, use a cage tool called a cage nut, and make sure that we, there's coil springs inside here that make sure we cage those so they um, don't release as we're taking it apart. It can just be hand tight, that's all you need. And at that point, take your 3 8 drive with a T27 Torx bit on it. And before I do this, what I like to do is actually clean out these, the heads of the screws a little bit because sometimes the liner dust will get in there and you can't get a good engagement from the tool. So I'll, I'll use a pick to clean this out. I'll actually use some shop air to bowl that out. And then you're ready to start removing all the liner screws. And again, I do this by hand just to break them loose. And once again broke loose, you could use an air impact. That way you won't strip out the bolts. You strip them out, then you'll have to drill them out and tap them, or you'll have to probably just go with a reman fan driver or something. Okay, now that we've taken all the screws out, we can remove our friction liner. We're gonna save that for later, so make sure you don't get a lot of grease on it or anything. Just wanna keep that clean. And then we're gonna take out our clutch pack. So most of the time you can just take the clutch pack and you can take a screwdriver and pry the clutch pack up to remove. If it's difficult doing that, you can apply some shop air 
Hold your hand on top, apply some shop air on the back to, to pop that loose. Let's remove that. And at this point, we're gonna take some shop rags and we're gonna clean up all the old grease off the clutch pack and then out of the drive itself. After we clean a lot of the grease out, we also need to remove the old quad seal and we'll just finish wiping the grease out. Then you'll have to remove the snap ring, hold it in the air cap. There is a little lip on that snap ring that you can get underneath and just walk it out. You do get a new one of these in the kit. Then to remove the air cap, it's easiest to use two flathead screwdrivers on either side and start prying up. There you have the air cap. Now this air cap, we're gonna remove this old O-ring seal on there because you do get a new one of those as well. We're also gonna replace this face seal. Okay, then next we're gonna remove the air cartridge by taking out the snap ring. And since we're not gonna reuse the old cartridge, I'm gonna pull it out with the uh, channel locks, or again, you can put a little bit of air pressure to the back side and hold your finger on the top of it to pop it out of there as well. Make sure you are holding your finger on top because the air cartridge will come shooting out of there, so. At this point, you can see the main nut holding the back bearing in. I always like to just check, check the bearing, make sure it's, it feels good. This one does, uh, our drag bearings are designed to go the distance. So we're gonna leave the main nut, everything in, intact the way it is now. And we're gonna check the air patches as well. Make sure there's no dirt in there or moisture, rust, things like that. If there is, you gotta clean it out with a wire brush or something and make sure that you blow it out before you start reassembling. And at this point, we're ready to uh, reassemble the clutch. We'll start with a new air cartridge and be careful not to get any grease or dirt on the carbon tip of this cartridge. So always handle on the outside. You'll take the grease that comes in the kit and we're gonna lubricate the O-rings for the cartridge and reassemble. Back into the band drive. Okay, I like taking a little screwdriver, just make sure that cartridge is seated down. The snap ring does go in a certain position. The top is beveled and the bottom is flat. So the flat always goes down, bevel up. Okay, once you install the snap ring, I like to push down with the screwdriver, you'll feel it snap in and you'll hear it snap in. And then I like to take a clean rag and just hit the top of that cartridge and make sure there's no grease or dirt on top of there. Next step is take our air cap and we're gonna install our new O-ring. And again, we're gonna apply some O-ring lube. Then the air cap is ready to install. Before installing this, I like to again, take a nice clean part of the rag Wipe off the face seal that comes in contact with the air cartridge. It's easiest to keep the air cap straight and square when you're putting it in. And it should just go right in and you'll hear it click down. Next, we're going to install our new snap ring that comes in the kit. And walk that around. Again, take a screwdriver, push it in. You're going to hear it snap in. Now we're ready to lubricate and install our quad seal. The quad seal is all also positional. So meaning it has a groove on the one side, that groove has to go down. Before we install the quad seal, we're gonna essentially take the rest of the grease that we supply and we're gonna put it right in the area where the quad seal goes. All the way around. I like to take a little lube on and put it on the quad seal as well. Again, with the lip down. And 
Then take your rag and just wipe the top of this off where the friction material goes. Okay, now we're ready to install uh, the clutch pack back onto the clutch. And what I like to do is add a little bit of grease on the outside here where the quad seal will come in contact. And when installing, hold at a slight angle. And you're gonna push down and you'll feel a seat into that quad seal. And at this point, what you like to do is turn this 180 degrees. What that'll do is assure that that quad seal is seated and will not leak. And then while you're turning it, and when you get to the end, you're gonna be lining up the holes to add your liner screws back in. And from this point, I'm gonna grab your liner again. Be careful not to touch the surface again with greasy hands. I'm gonna set the liner back on and line up the holes. And then we supply new cap screws with Loctite in the kit as well. So you can start reassembling the screws into the liner. Now at this point, you can use an air tool to run these down, but don't run them in tight. Because when you get to the end, you do have to torque these as well to 80 inch pounds. And I also like to do a star pattern when I'm tightening these down as well, just like you would on a wheel. Okay, grab your torque wrench. Again, it's gonna be 80 inch pounds, and we're gonna torque again in our star pattern as well. Now, what we'd like to do is Make sure we clean that friction material off in case we did get any dirt or grease on there. And then we're gonna remove our cage nut. Now we're ready to reassemble the fan mounting disc onto the clutch. But first what we have to do is apply air pressure to the back. So I've put an airline in the back here, got air pressure, This will assure that you get the proper torque on the jack bolt when you're putting the uh, fan mounting disc back on. Spin it on by hand. We're gonna take our foot pound torque wrench and we're gonna torque this to 100 foot pounds. Once we get it all assembled, you can see that right now the clutch is disengaged because I have air to it. I don't hear any air leaks, which is good. I wanna make sure there's no air leaks anywhere. And then when we remove the air pressure from it, you'll see the clutch engage. And same thing. Now that the fan drive is reassembled, it's ready to install back on the truck.